A while back, my channel got big out of nowhere. My video on Spyqueed blew up to proportions I couldn't ever expect. However, this put a lot of attention to my previous video I released before that one. A video that very much had issues with a mod called Ecclese Alpha in a very specific way. Reading the comments on that video, you get painted the image of a mod which was insanely hard for no real reason. A mod that was nigh impossible and frequently unfair to play. At the time, I didn't think much of it. But as time went on, it became clear that I had permanently changed the trajectory of a mod. My video was the biggest video on Ecclese for the absolute longest time, doing better than even Good b 2s best videos, and people would know the mod from IT. Not the developers, not the fans, but me. On a video that talked down on a very specific element. Ever since then, I made a rule to myself to never talk down on mods again. No matter how much I wanted to, it was never my place to put down PZ2 mods. I am not the arbiter of good and bad game design. I'm a British man with strong opinions. That's all. Now I'm not gonna sit here and tell you the rest of my channel history. That's not why you're here, and it isn't really why this video exists. This video exists more so than anything to correct a mistake. Yet that's easier said than done. This video has already taken several full rewrites to fully articulate what I want to say, as I feel that this is such a complicated topic, and what I want to say about it isn't so easy to say. Because, well, Ecclese is my personal favourite mod of all time. Okay, so now that's over with, the comments on that video have been intensely negative for a long time. Because ultimately, it's a video on a negative aspect of a mod that is not that surprising, but it still feels disingenuous to me. For many, many reasons. Let's start off with explaining what Ecclese actually is, and then wrap around to these points, because I truly do believe Ecclese is the most important PUZ mod ever. Eclipse is a misspelling of Eclipse that eventually became the name of the mod for search results related reasons, according to rumours. It was a mod developed by GoodB2 and Mindful Tactician, these days known as DT. GoodB2 developed most of the game's levels, balancing and did the art, while DT did most of the coding and implementation. The mod got cancelled a while ago now for various reasons relating to mental health on GoodB2's end. Just to get out of the way now, Good B2 is not a good person. I also have very strong personal reasons to dislike them. I'm not interested in going through why, but I don't consider them relevant to Ecclese at this point. They'll be brought up a few times throughout the video, when they are in fact relevant, but for the most part it is crucial to separate the art from the artist. Let's move on. Ecclese itself is generally considered a veteran mod, at least in comparison to the modern mods like Alphaverse or Reflourished. It's not exactly the hardest mod ever made, and is in fact on the easier side of PvZ2 mods overall. However, its design expects you to understand core fundamentals of playing PvZ2 at a higher skill level, understanding things such as way stalling, sudden flower spam, proper plan food management, and other similar concepts. Ecclese puts a lot more focus onto Sun than most other mods, featuring some of the most expensive plants mods have ever seen, if not THE most expensive plants. This is due to the tiering system, Essentially a means to get three versions of each plant. A Pichita goes from Pichita damage for 100 sun, to Rapida damage for 225 sun, to Gatling damage for 450 sun. Meanwhile plants like Missile Toe go from a damage dealer, to a damaging staller, to a full on staller with their tiers. These tiers can be swapped between freely once you unlock all tiers for a plant. These tiers allow for much greater variety with how you approach levels. Functionally, there are three times the plants than you would see normally, with a massive amount of overlap of course, but they all allow different strategies and create different experiences. By far the most common type of tier is one that simply increases the cost and damage of a plant in question, which has a massive knock-on effect. Ecclese is a lot more focused on getting sun, and a lot of it, as you have far more means to spend it. It's a playstyle that hasn't exactly been seen much elsewhere, and one that is complemented by the balancing. I wouldn't call it least balanced. I wouldn't call any mod truly balanced, frankly, but it has a lot of variety in how plans are designed. 
While your basic plants are simple, many plants have received massive reworks to change their role and make them more unique. Plants like Hot Date now act as an instant means to redirect large amounts of zombies. Hocus Crocus now will backstab zombies with its projectiles. Gloomvine now does this, which is very much not at what it normally does. And even without such dramatic reworks, plants can be very different. Red Stinger's most important stat is their recharge here, not their costs, meaning they can provide insane amounts of value, but you just can't get many out. The instants in Ecclesia are also very powerful. The air of effect removal instants aren't as effective, but most stalling instants are insanely powerful. Stalgia being the standard example, acting as a heavy 3x3 knockback. This just helps Ecclesia's dominant playstyles, as they are all focused on producing more sun. Something Stalgia can help with tremendously by providing cheap stalling capabilities. In this regard, Ecclesia's playstyle remains extremely active even deeper into the game, as you need to constantly assess threats as they come, and use the tools at your disposal to deal with as many as possible. And being a very fast paced 50 slim meta mod really does help with that. Ecclesia does also fetch new content, but not in the form of new worlds. Ecclesia adds new elements to each world it goes through, including new zombies, new gimmicks, and extremely new level elements that remain extremely unique to this day. More so than anything though, Ecclesia lives and dies based on its level design. This remains very different from most other mods, often acting far more puzzly than levels in other mods, being far more interested in rapidly and chaotically changing how the player interacts with the game's levels. Levels like 1-9 are extremely different to levels you will see in any other mod, especially considering how early it is. It's a gimmicky stage through and through, and gives you the general sense of what Ecclesia wants to go for. Levels like 12-3 are entirely built around a whole new win condition, but acts more like a minigame, too, which has its own issues I'll get into later. As you can tell by me calling them 1-9 and 12-3, the level structure of Ecclesia is radically different to the vanilla game and most mods. Each world has 10 levels, and are signified by the number in the front. This is in fact a fully linear experience, meaning the levels you complete are usually just the next one on the line. Once you beat all worlds, you return to them for part 2, where plant food is now given to the player, and the second half of each world gets introduced into the game, such as fishermen only appearing in Big Wave Beach Part 2. Once you complete that, you are done with the main content, though side content gets unlocked constantly throughout from just about everything you do. Part 2 in general is also where most new gimmicks and zombies tend to be introduced. These zombies and gimmicks tend to lean hard onto the gimmicky side of things, or are incredibly simple with very little actual middle ground. Neverdodos are a zombie that needs to be airborne to hit, but can only be force airborne by an incredibly specific set of plants, with a separate, incredibly specific set of plants able to attack it normally. Meaningwhile, Shadow Zombie is a decently-ish high-HP zombie that ignores plants, and that's it. Jetpacks in this mod also ignore plants and function the same way, with lower health, so... Yeah. And Coral Cage is literally just a pharaoh for more HP. Meanwhile, Goo Zombie Man I don't remember the name of can revive himself infinitely unless you stop him. These zombies aren't exactly consistent. Occasionally, you'll also end up doing side content. These often feature mechanics of their own and frequently take the form of night versions of levels. Though epic quests which lean hard into the wacky and unique design are far from uncommon. Beating these parts of side content will grant you of additional plants and some tier locks, which will unlock tiering for plants which have it not available. These can be seen from the Almanac. The side levels are typically very old and outdated, or simply not worth playing, though occasionally these can prove alright. It is important to note though that the side content is about two times as large as the main game itself, though, so I really wouldn't worry about playing them if you were interested in playing the mod. I'll throw up on screen the important quest for unlocking those plans so you don't spend time beating pointless levels if you just want them. Moving on. Before I finish off this section, I want to briefly explain that the most recent version is Ecclesia Alpha 5, not Ecclesia Beta 1.9. Yes, it, it literally regressed. It is a dumb naming scheme, but a naming scheme that unfortunately has remained, so we have to deal with it. Yay. Anyways, with that said, I want to talk about the flaws of Ecclesia, because there are some things very much worth discussing there. So, let's get into it. Ecclesia's biggest flaw will always be the same flaw that held it back from day one. Its design is fundamentally messy in many ways. Tear locking is perhaps the biggest and best example. 
For a mod whose biggest strength is a plant variety, a mechanic which locks that away under levels which, for the record, are very much outdated for the current version of the game, strictly makes the game worse at that point. Especially when plants like Repeater require over half the damn game beaten, then an additional 20 optional side levels to complete. Tear locking is the most obvious example of this messy design, but others still exist. For instance, minigame levels that shift the core gameplay so much that it is nigh unrecognizable from its original form, in ways a balancing typically doesn't particularly enjoy. Ecclesia's plants are generally not designed to gimmicky stages, they are plants with small and semi specific niches with a ton of customizability. They play far better in normal levels with minor objectives than anything else. These levels end up clashing a lot with what Ecclesia's plants end up doing the best in. This also results in the earlier worlds being, frankly, awful. Ancient Egypt especially is an absolutely horrendous world in Ecclesia, featuring levels that drag on endlessly and attempt to introduce tiering as a concept before the game tells you which plants are actually tiered, and in a conveyor so you can't see the increased sun costs. That convey level even is so overwhelming it's not a real structure to anything at all. And for some reason, Lost City and Piracies have nothing going on at all in comparison, with only Dark Ages even really attempting to do anything. These four worlds at the start of the game alone drive off a lot of players due to their inherent lack of polish. Otherwise, I think the biggest issues come from difficulty. Ecclesi needed to have made it clear who its audience was much earlier in development. Ecclesi is not a mod for casual players, yet never really did enough to ensure that people understood that. Part of that is obviously impossible if you're familiar with the early modern community, but Ecclesi Alpha should have made it clear that other mods would be a better first play. Unfortunately, it could be too with a massive ego problem so that never happened, meaning new players would get burned by the mechanics of mod and simply give up trying to do better which at that point is not their fault. It also certainly doesn't help that a certain ego calls a full rework of a beloved mod, and is something whom's design is constantly cannibalizing itself. Ecclesia Beta is a wholly different beast from Ecclesia Alpha, with entirely different core design fundamentals, far less gimmicky stages, and overall being a more straightforward game. It wasn't great compared to what we have now, admittedly. It was an early mod after all. But at the very least, its design was internally consistent. In other words, where Ecclesia Alpha is better than Ecclesia Beta, I don't think it's because the design itself is better. I think it's because of a mistake, honestly. I think the level design also has some problems overall. Conveyor belts, for instance, are often more frequently than not intended as challenge stages, as opposed to a typical spam to win quote unquote glory. While that can be good at times, these conveyors can occasionally be really bloody tough, and losing to a conveyor over and over again is, simply put, not fun. And whenever this happens, nobody is really happy. More problematically is the mod's attempts at plan intros. Look, I may have brought up my old video as bad in many ways, but I honestly think the point still applies. Levels become overtuned, become over focus on the new plans you just unlocked, which means that you get ways which look like this, while then having those same levels try to counter those plans is trying to get you to use. It's just not smart. If a player actually attempts to play the game have a one for a large chunk of the other game, all that happens is that they get burned. You always have to use your most recently unlocked plant, something the game never tells you, then tries to counter that same plant that is so often intended to be required for victory. It is very dumb. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and mention that the biggest underlying theme here is a mismatch of systems that are attempting to work together, but end up not fitting well. The tiering system conflicts with the tier locks and the level designs built around specific plants. The level design conflicts with the freeform nature of the balancing and arguably pacing, causing worlds to be dragged into extremely gimmicky stages often that go far too long. If you look at Guppy 2's other work, this is a reoccurring theme. Breeze is their most recent project they are making for a mother to be casual in nearly every single way, yet has some of the most convoluted mechanics of any mod I've played, including a sunflower that costs double that of Pea Shooter variable plant ranges, and a whole mechanic whose existence requires a player to understand how waves work in PZ2 and only makes the game harder. It's a decently alright mod when it allows itself to be interesting, but it's trying to be casual by the easy levels, while being expressly non-casual for the complicated game mechanics on display. And Grind Thousand also exists, a mod built around leveling where the levels are so often literally useless, and half the content means nothing because of the way grinding works in that mod. I bring these up because it's a recurring theme, and I think it's the biggest point of constructive criticism I can give. 
It's a problem throughout all of Good P2's work that I can see, and one that I feel dominates a lot of her issues as a designer. Which is why the second half of even Ecclesia Alpha being as good as it is, is so impressive. Ecclesia's balancing at its core is fundamentally just fun in a way other mods haven't really captured. Plans get absolutely massive in Ecclesia, and learning how to wield them cause the entire game to shift dramatically. With balancing focusing on active playstyles and content control, though, you find yourself constantly managing your son, between getting out massively powerful plants into the fields, and dealing with everything else coming your way. That, to me, is the core that makes Ecclesia fun, and by the latter half of the mod, this comes out more and more. I think the world where this really starts coming into constant effect is Wild West Part 2, which for the record is absurdly late, as that means running through every single world twice and beating a total of 160 levels minimum, but this is where the game almost entirely opens up. The upcoming worlds really don't do much, if anything, to limit your deck building. Your past the point levels can really force you to do gimmicky nonsense, and you're stuck with just the raw gameplay and it flows tremendously. Weird plans still get encouraged from time to time. Plants like Hot Date are fully capable of being built around, and plants like Toadstool have very notable and strong effects if you learn how to use them. But there isn't really much stopping you from full DPSing most levels. When levels do get interesting, they do it in ways where creative deck building is encouraged, such as 17.9, a level where the player has to get creative to deal with heavy threats on lanes they cannot plant on, or 1610, where the player has to deal with an increasingly dangerous gimmick in whatever way they please, by having all zombies constantly change the lanes. It's very well done. Even in some worlds before this, glimmers of hope shine through quite brightly. Wild West and Far Future have amazing part ones as well, featuring levels where you have to deal with gimmicks that encourage creativity, rather than levels where the gimmicks are so extreme, you're not playing PvZ anymore. Levels like 6, 7, and 9, 6 are very interesting and require thought to approach, but are still at their core relying on the same skills you've been building up. 6, 7 gives you a lot of sun each big wave, acting similar to PvZ1's last stand, and encouraging constant smart play to get full value out of your sun. And 9, 6 is a level where enemies are swamped everywhere, but if you accidentally hit the bug boss after dropping, even more are going to be coming your way. It encourages the player to play defensively instead of offensively, with the win condition of that level being simply surviving for an amount of time. In later levels, the overfocus on plants almost entirely naturally breaks down. As you have so many options, levels no longer have the ability to lock players out of playing how they want. And also the justification for some of these plans are just get weird. Magnifying Grass never gets a real intro when you play casually, but a song with DT like a year ago, and 79 is actually a Magni intro! Because Plant Food Magni has multi-lane range. No. To be clear, I'm saying this as a positive, because this means that these levels are far less tied to the individual plants, as other options become more and more effective than the quote-unquote intended ones. And when Ecclesia decides to go full puzzle, it can actually work when the plants and zombies are fully designed for it. iZombie is the best example as Ecclesia has by far the best eye zombie I've ever played. These levels are truly puzzly, while being open enough that multiple solutions can work, and feature distinct and unique gimmicks that are both fun to play against, and actually force bigger brain plays. They are legitimately great and worth playing Ecclesia for alone, ignoring the long playtime required to unlock them in the first place. And to be honest, as much as the new zombies can be questionable at times, they work more than fine in the worlds themselves when used well in the levels. Shadow Zombie is incredibly simple, but he fits his world just fine. Acting as a simple threat that works well for grave gimmicks of the world itself, and acts as a nice accent to the world as a whole. Coral Cage adds the much needed HP to a world that really lacked any of the problems, and single-handedly allows the world to play slower, which I think is more than good enough to make up for the boring design. I also want to specifically call out the S levels for being as good as they are. They certainly are not consistently stellar, but they tend to be some of the best levels early on, featuring valuable rewards and unique level designs. They are all levels focused on distinct mechanics and feel genuinely unique across many mods. S8 is probably my favourite example, being a level which renders your space extremely limited, 
gets an absolute swarm of swashbucklers and barrels, also featuring armor 4 zombies to require good DPS, forcing you to use instant plants constantly and carefully. It's one of the few levels where cheap plants really shine as much as they do, and I think it's a massive success. Other memorable levels include S9, a long stage where you are forced to beat the level only using a single extremely high cost Aki, and are constantly trying to save up for it, while having to deal with the standard array of zombies. And other levels continue adding wilder and stranger gimmicks, or even just go super simple with a large rushy early game. In this regard, I think Eccles succeeds. I find that when Eccles is good, it's good. If you can get into a good mindset, it flows incredibly well level through level, with each level posing unique challenges and threats. One level needs a plan for a long, heavy struggle, where your biggest plants will need to be placed fast and early. Then the next level could be all about setting up a kill box, or being forced to adapt into a new strategy that can counter the new zombie gimmick, or deal with the objective run on top of you. When the mod isn't being bizarrely specific with its challenges, it can pose a very good time. But this isn't really why Eccles is so important. Yeah, that's the title of the video, and I should clarify what it actually means. Eccles as a whole has proven itself to be the single most important mod PZ2 will ever receive, and I don't think that's ever gonna change. Eccles Beta is a very different mod to Eccles Alpha. I'd say in many regards its design was much more complete, with levels that are far more straightforward than what we have now, for better or for worse. And while it's certainly in polish compared to what we have now, Eccles Beta was the first PZ2 mod that really follows the modern mod design. The only mod before it that really comes close at all was Holy Mashup, the predecessor to Reflourished, which is an absolute buggy as hell mess with level design surrounded by the biggest quotation marks mankind has ever seen. Holy Mashup, in many regards, is the last big project that represents what PZ2 modding used to be. It's flashy, over the top, but ultimately not an inherently great experience. It's not built around being a good game, it's built around being closer to a showcase of what they could do by twisting the game in their own direction. There's absolutely nothing wrong with this, people can make what they want after all, but this doesn't really make a compelling and fun experience to play yourself. Eccles broke the mold by being the first mod to actively redesign a game in their own image. Plants got rebalanced around a new sun meta, where producing thousands of sun is intentional to complete. Sun spam and good deck building got emphasized, and above all else, the casual element of the game got cut down and replaced with a far more complicated and strategic playstyle. I cannot understate how impactful this has become for PZ2 modding. If you've played a western PZ2 mod ever, they all trade themselves back to Eccles in some way. Altverse literally spawned because its P liked Eccles and wanted to make a more casual mod as a counterpart. Now the main developer, Poss, was a fan of Eccles Beta and was drawn into the modding community by said project. The Flourished is certainly the one that's as disconnected from Eccles Beta as possible, but when her Flourished design got improved during CMH's part 2, its design reads a lot more like what Eccles started than anything vanilla or even Reflourish did before. And frankly, I doubt that Reflourish's balancing would have as much care and focus put into it without Eccles' existence pushing up the standards. But just Outburst alone has inspired so many modding projects from so many people, let alone what the original Eccles did. Mods like Shallow and Into the Storm were brought forth, and while these really didn't mean much in the long run, it more so shows the influence of a mod and its style. Eccles introduced a more hardcore balancing style that a lot of mods now follow, actively trying to prevent overpowered plants from being available. Eccles introduced a lot of common level design traits that a lot of mods follow now, focusing more on individual levels than a greater whole, where each level has something to do by itself, instead of simply making 32 non-distinct levels. Eccles single-handedly also just changed the way PZ2 mods would be made forever. It's not likely we would otherwise be in a similar situation as how PZ1 mods work, where they are often strange and really not inherently, quote unquote, well designed experiences, relying more on the raw chaos of their format or technically impressive feats of modding, rather than them having strong game design at their base. Eclipse, on the other hand, focuses a lot more on that raw design, and shifted the community's focus on modding away from the big and flashy stuff, at least on the western side, and towards simply fun and interesting gameplay. Just look at mods like Reprise when compared to Wildverse, and you can see my points. Even now, Eccles has forever shifted the direction of how PZ2 mods are designed, 
most mods that exist now would just not exist for the Khalees, and what mods would aim to do would be wholly different. And, on a more personal note, you wouldn't have ever seen one of my videos. When I was younger, I played a decent chunk of PZ2, but I grew out of it during secondary school and never really picked it up again. The only reason I got back into it in the first place was Shy Guy's videos on Plants vs Zombies, which eventually led to some of Good B2's GT videos to be recommended to me. From there, I picked Ecclese 1.5 up for the first time, but really only got into it during Ecclese Beta 1.6. That version of the game had so much nonsense to play with, and is what got me interested in the finer details of PZ2. Plants like Intensive Carrot Tier 2 had infinite shenanigans to play with, costing 100 sun for 6 seconds recharge time. It was dumb and broken in the best way possible. Over time, I learned to master the balancing of Ecclese. I learned about the power of wall spam and sun spam, and pioneered running a million sun producers to get absurd amounts of sun. I learned how to use plants like Bowling Wolf from playing Ecclese, and that's something I will never forget. I was there when Ecclese Beta turned to Alpha, as everyone told Good B2 that wasn't what anyone wanted, as they banned the entirety of the community they had built up over the years, as they continued making the same mistakes over and over. And then, they made a mistake that changed my entire life. They added mints into the game, a gambling currency which did nothing but make the game worse. And so, I made my very first video essay. It was taken a lot more seriously than the ones I do nowadays, where I went out of my way to link and find sources for data and such. But it remained the second most important video I would ever make. And since then, I stuck with PZ2. Then, everything changed when I uploaded the most important video of my career. The one about Spikeweed. A video explaining why it was my favourite plant of all time, with most of my enjoyment of a plant coming from Ecclese itself. That is the reason I am here. This is the reason I am so annoyed at how Ecclese seems so looked down upon now. People forget it so easily in favour of the newer and flashier mods. Sure, Ecclese had its problems, but I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for the mod. And for me, I will always remember that. And in fact, Ecclese already affected me in significant ways before. You remember Shallow? That was my mod! It's not a good mod by any means, but a lot of the mistakes I've learned from come from my development on that mod. I learned the importance of rapid gameplay. I learned the importance of letting the player feel powerful. Most of what I know now comes from that experience. That would be why I understand the gameplay of PZ2 so much. To be fully clear, I don't think this is necessarily me glorifying Good B2's work. The entire reason my channel exists in its current form is, ultimately, because they did something really stupid that still exists to this day in-game. To be entirely blunt and frank, Good B2 is an absolute cry to be the man with the emotional intelligence of a toaster, who runs from all their issues instead of finding actual goddamn solutions. Someone who genuinely believes they know best, and have a right to look down on others' work, simply because they can quote-unquote, do better. I have a lot of dislike for the guy, as you can see. And beyond this, a lot of Ecclesia's flaws comes from their own personal failings as a person. Again, they don't seem capable of designing consistency. But to me, Ecclesia these days is fully reclaimed by the community. We'll never see a true continuation to it, frankly, but what Ecclesia has become is a great tool for screwing around. What Ecclesia is now is what we make of it. We can modify it however we please, to create experiences out of a game it was not built for. Whether by grind reworks or simply changing elements to be what we prefer, it's a fully open source mod now, with express permission to do whatever we want to it, and can take whatever elements from it we desire. At this point, it's a cornerstone of modding history, and one that I simply think needs to be treated with respect. I don't think we'll ever truly see another mod like Ecclese. I don't think one truly can exist in the same way, nor do I think anyone is particularly interested in repeating the mistakes that plagued Ecclese. I think that's correct. To me, the most important lesson from Ecclese is to experiment and do weird things, experiment with new systems and design to see what happens, to create something truly new instead of the same old crap everyone else is making, but also ensure those systems are polished, that they are sensible, that they fundamentally should be designed in a way to encourage fun and variety rather than simply be there for a flashy gimmick. That lesson, to me, is what makes Ecclese so important to this day. It's a lesson that, ultimately, will forever define PZ2 modding.
Strange little video this time, huh? I say this would have been one of my weirder videos, but my last video was goddamn with the bombing corporation, so I'm not sure it applies at this point. This has been a video that has overall been in the works for over a year or so, so... Yeah, no. Glad to have it out at last, at least. I do kinda need to make a more overall PZ2 video at some point soon, but... Meh. Sometimes you make videos just for yourself, and this was a pretty fun project to make, so I can't complain too much. With that being said, I do recommend playing Eclis. I have a version of it, if you haven't already. I would strongly recommend that you go out of your way to play something like Alverse or Reflourished first, particularly the former. And frankly, these days I'd sooner recommend something like Requiem than Eclis, a mod made by DT, which has proven to be extremely fun for me. But of course, you don't have to. Mods of PZ2 are always going to be somewhat niche, due to them being unavailable on iOS, and ultimately they are just a small section of a larger community that's still actively making videos on this game. After all, Challenge Runs have semi-recently sprung up out of nowhere again, so PZ2 mods hardly account for a majority of videos in the space, if not in fact accounting for a minority. But as I made clear, PZ2 mods are the only reason I am here, and the only reason I remain in this community, and so I shall likely be making videos talking about them for a damn long time still. This shall be the end of this one. I hope you enjoyed this little rant about something I'm passionate about. This has been Creeps, and have a good one.